Hello there, people of the internet. Do I have a treat for you today? The answer is yes. That was a rhetorical question. A super cool human being by the name of Juan, who also happens to be a fan of this channel, and who has more creativity and talent in their little finger than I have in my entire body, sent me an original AI video creation that they made and asked if we could review it and analyze it together for all of you. And not just the finished product. No, 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 no. See, we're actually gonna get a behind the scenes look of how this AI video was made from start to finish. We're talking the specific tools that he used, the hardware and the software, the prompt engineering, just a total look under the hood of this video, all for the purpose of education and sharing knowledge with you. The complete video is about five minutes long, so I'm not gonna play the whole thing here, but there is a link in the description. I do recommend that you go check it out. And while you're there, please like and subscribe and comment and do all that fun stuff. Also, if you've got an AI video that you are proud of and you'd like for me to review and analyze it in the same way, check the description for instructions on how to get in touch with me. Without further ado, let's get into it. So again, I do recommend that you go and check out the video if for no other reason than so you understand what we're talking about as we're going along. But essentially, this is a preschool level children's educational show called Feltland. And this episode in particular is about bees and pollination and why those things are important. My first impressions before I knew anything about how this video was made is that it is one of the most polished, high quality, consistent AI videos that I've ever seen with an emphasis on consistency the textures, the facial features, the shape and design of the characters, the animation style, everything feels extremely cohesive. As far as individual specific things that I like, there are a ton of little things. It's kind of hard to pick favorites, but I really love the voice for the queen bee. That's gotta be one of the most adorable f***ing things I've ever heard. I like the little pollen trails that follow the bees around, like Tinkerbell fairy dust. The pollen forming little heart trails behind the bees here in this one clip. Honestly, I think my favorite part of the whole thing is this one clip where the bees just kind of smack this flower with their feet. I don't know why, there's just it just f***ing tickles me pink every time I see it. One might even say it's the bee's knees. No, you're right, that was terrible, I'm sorry. Anyway. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about how this thing was made. For Juan's workflow, everything starts in ChatGPT. He has developed an entire team of specialized ChatGPT agents. He has one for song lyrics, episode scripts, image prompting, video prompting, and thumbnail, title, and SEO work. And this modular setup allows him to move quickly from initial concept to final render all in the same place and keep things organized. Now, as you might've guessed, all of the clips for this video were generated using high quality first frame images. I don't even know how you could possibly do something like this otherwise. But what was surprising to me is that the original images were all generated in ChatGPT by Sora in a three by two aspect ratio and then imported into InsMind where they were outpaint extended into 16 by nine. Now, why Sora in particular? I use ChatGPT as my daily driver LLM, and I've never been that impressed with its image generation. But according to Juan, Sora was the best tool he could find for generating the specific felt texture that he needed for this project. I actually went and tried this myself. I asked ChatGPT to just generate a felt teddy bear with no further instructions whatsoever, and this is what it generated for me. So, can confirm, it actually does a pretty decent job at this specific thing. So I think the key takeaway here is, if you're looking for a specific aesthetic or texture, play around with a bunch of different image generation tools until you find something that gets you most of the way there. Don't worry about quality or aspect ratio because you can use other tools to outpaint those or upscale them later on in the process. So now we have our high quality first frame images in 16 by nine aspect ratio. Here's where it gets a little more complicated. Depending on the requirements for each specific video clip, Juan took these images to be generated into video in either Midjourney, Kling, or VO3. Each one had their own specific pros and cons, so let's go through each of them one at a time. Midjourney was the best for these longer panning horizontal shots, because out of the three engines, it was the best at keeping character coherence, and it even spawned new identical bees as the shot progressed. 
something that neither Kling or Vio was all that good at. Now, the output resolution for mid-journey video is 480p, which isn't that great. But again, keep in mind, all of the clips are getting upscaled later on, so that really isn't that much of an issue. One of the biggest perks for mid-journey pro and above is that it allows for unlimited relax video generations, which are painfully slow to generate, but they are unlimited. So you can just queue up a bunch and then go get a cup of coffee or spend time with your family or touch grass, you know, whatever. So that's mid-journey. Now let's talk about Kling. Kling performed the best in terms of visual effects, so everything with the golden pollen glitter stuff, and it generally gave a more realistic felt texture, which was important for a lot of the detail shots. The weak point for Kling was character continuity, so he used this mostly for shots that had high special effects requirements, and not so much for shots with a lot of movement or characters coming and going. Finally, VO3 was used for, of course, all the speaking lines with the lioness character. Which makes sense. I mean, how many times have we said on this channel that the only thing you should be using VO3 for is its native speech capabilities? One character speaking lines directly into the camera. This is the thing that VO is best at. Once the speech clips were generated, he ran them through a voice changing filter in Eleven Labs to get the tone just right. Here's a quick before and after to show you what I mean. That's how we get this special honey. Want to sing with me about it? How we get this special honey. Wanna sing with me about it? Once all the video clips were generated, they were assembled and edited in DaVinci Resolve Studio, along with some music, which was generated in Suno. And as a final step, the finished product was locally upscaled in Topaz Video AI, first through the RIA model to upscale and denoise to 4K, and then through the Kronos model to interpolate to 60 FPS. And there you have it, folks. That's the whole workflow, start to finish. Now, obviously, there's a lot of details along the way that we can't cover for the sake of time, but those are the broad strokes of how the sausage is made. And yes, I did just manage to use stroke and sausage in the same sentence, so you're very welcome for that as well. If you have specific questions about the workflow or things that you'd like for us to go into more detail in, leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure that Juan sees them. I'm thinking we could even do a follow-up FAQ video based on the questions that you guys ask. So let us know what you're interested in. By the way, this is the workflow that Juan used for this video in particular, but apparently he's now come up with an even better workflow using openart.ai. I don't know all the details yet. Apparently it's still being worked out, so stay tuned for future details on that. All right, let's talk about expenses. How much did all of this cost to make? I mean, we're talking like five to 10 different pieces of software. That must have cost a fortune, right? Well, probably less than you'd think, actually. As far as software subscriptions, Juan paid just under $200 a month, and that included Midjourney, Kling, OpenArt, Eleven Labs, ChatGPT, Suno, and Innsmine. Well, wait a minute, where's VO3 on this list? Well, I'm glad you asked, hypothetical internet stranger. I have it on good authority that it is entirely possible to sign up for, oh, say, five different student accounts on VO3 which would hypothetically give you enough credits for about 33 minutes of free video content every single month. Now, I'm not one to advocate for pirating software. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't download a car, right? And certainly not from a locally owned mom and pop operation like Google, right? For shame. Anyway, so those are the costs as far as generating the clips. Now let's talk about upscaling. Juan does his upscaling locally on his own computer using Topaz AI, which cost him a one-time fee of $300, and runs his upscaling using an RTX 3090, which, to be fair, are pretty steep right now. I think you can get one used on eBay for like $800 at the moment. Hell, guys, I'm running a 3070 right now, and I'm fucking thrilled to have it. But especially for local upscaling, you're really going to need some decent hardware like that. Otherwise, it's going to take like 20 years to render. Even with this 3090, Juan said it took hours to process this five minute clip. So, if all of this sounds really expensive to you, keep in mind that this is one guy working out of his home and he was able to generate something with this level of quality. Just a few years ago, this would have required a whole team of people working out of a professional studio. Tens of thousands of dollars, minimum. Also keep in mind, hardware is a long-term investment. You're gonna be using that 3090 for years to come. And as a final bonus, 
Here are some of the stats for how many generated clips it took to make this five minute video. Between Kling, Midjourney, and VO3. The total time across all three tools was about 31 minutes and 26 seconds, which was edited down to just about four and a half minutes long. And I would imagine that now that Juan knows what he's doing and has this style all set up, he would be able to generate new ones much faster and with much fewer generations. Juan is native to Brazil, and he grew up with a passion for painting and drawing. But due to life circumstances, he ended up in a career as a military police officer. What with the recent explosion of AI video, he has completely left his career to pursue AI video creation full time. In his own words, after years of dealing with blood and tragedy, now I work from my beachside room listening to the ocean while creating these little felt animals. This contrast has been therapeutic and mentally very positive. My girlfriend loves the project so much that she's now the official art director and is helping me create the images. So the team has now doubled. I don't know how many of you remember the first video that I made on this channel where I was reacting to the VO3 speech demo, the We Can Talk one. My response to that was despair and hopelessness and cynicism. <laughs> I foresaw the downfall of human civilization. To me, it is so nice that there are other people out there who saw those videos and are less jaded and cynical than I am, and they saw an opportunity to leave a career that they maybe weren't especially passionate about in order to pursue creating AI video full time. Anyway, not to get too sappy about it, but Juan, I think you're a really cool dude, especially for doing something like this. And I'm sure I'm not the only person who will watch this video and wish you great success in all of your endeavors. Anyway, guys, that's the whole kit and caboodle. Now, again, this was a broad overview. If you have specific questions about the workflow, please leave a comment down below. Like I said, depending on the amount of requests we get, we may have to do some kind of a Q&A follow-up video at some point. Please do like and subscribe and leave a comment. I know everyone tells you to do that, but it's only because it actually does help quite a bit. And once again, if you have an AI video that you're especially proud of that you'd like for me to review, check the description for how to get in touch with me and let's make that happen, yeah? Thanks again, everybody, and I'll see y'all next time.